Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. In my last video, we talked about fish holding tanks and the materials they are most commonly produced of. And today we will continue and see how to properly choose the tank's shape and dimensions in accordance with the type of fish and its weight. And also, I will tell you which colors fish holding tanks should be. So, be sure to watch this video to the end and you will learn this and much more. And now let's talk about how to select the shape and size of the tank, depending on the fish species and the stage of growth. This is a very important point, which determines how your farm will be designed. So there are different species of fish that have various farming conditions and parameters. For example, we will take sturgeons. Sturgeon is bottom fish, so the tanks should not be deep. But if we take fry, it's surely different. The lava required 20-30 cm of tank's depth, and you could use rectangular trays. Fry needs tanks from 50 to 70 cm in depth. For grow out fish, 1 meter maximum. That's why tanks deeper than 1 meter and 20 cm are not used at all on sturgeon farms. Is it possible? Yes, it is. And the question is why it should be done this way. Because if you make deeper tanks, the entire additional volume of water will be completely useless. You will not be able to increase the stocking density, as the stocking density for sturgeons, by the way, is counted per square meter and not per cubic meter. Therefore, the recommended depth of tanks for grow out sturgeon is 1 meter. In connection to this fact, there are certain requirements in regards to the diameter. Well, first of all, you should not make tanks too small in diameter for farming grow out fish. If you grow sturgeons that are up to 1.5 or 2 or 3 kilograms, install the tanks that would be at least 3 meters in diameter. And preferably even more, the optimal diameter of tanks for sturgeon farms is for 6 meters. The maximum is 8 meters. Why? Because if you make the tank's diameter more than 8 meters at a depth of 1 meter, you will get very poor hydraulics, so it will be wide and very shallow. You will get lots of dirt accumulated on the bottom, and these suspended solids won't be treated effectively. Let's consider a round tank. It must have self-cleaning, that is, the water flows in tangentially, swirls around and follows into the central bottom drain. Everything is fine, but if you take too big diameter with relatively small depth, if you violate the width-depth ratio, you will get bad hydraulics and lots of dirt on the bottom of the tank. So let's summarize. For sturgeon lava, I recommended 20-30 cm deep, or small tanks up to 2 meters in diameter and a half a meter deep taking into account the dry stock. Trays can be made 3-4 meters long and 70 centimeters wide. For juvenile sturgeon, I recommended tanks of 2-3 meters in diameter and maximum 1 meter deep, taking into account the dry stock. Well, I guess you understand what the dry stock or dry reserve is. We don't fill the tank to the edge. We have 20 cm reserve. It turns out that the depth of the tank is 1 meter. The dry reserve is 20 cm and water column depth is 80 cm. As for the grow out fish tanks, it's recommended to take the diameters of 4-6 meters and the depth of 1.20 meters, of which 1 meter is the depth of water and 20 cm is dry reserve. As far as trout is concerned, it's the type of fish that occupies the entire water column and that's what mainly distinguishes it from sturgeons. So, you can install a tank of almost any depth, but the most important thing is to stick to the proportions, because if you make too deep tanks and don't provide for timely fishing off, you will face big problems. I recommend making the larval trays the same dimensions as on sturgeons, except that they can be made a little deeper, 30, 40 or 50 centimeters in depth, but it's better not to experiment too much, because otherwise you will get uncomfortable handling, and it will be very uncomfortable for the fish farmer to work with the lava on if the trays are too deep. As for the fry tanks, I recommended to make them 2 to 4 meters in diameter and a meter or a meter and a half in depth. This is the best option for trout. And for grow out fish, there are no certain limits. I have seen a large number of tanks options, up to gigantic ones with a diameter of up to 15 meters and the depth of up to 4 meters. 
Of course, these tanks have their own nuances in terms of fish sorting, catching and so on, because it's a more complex construction than a simple, ordinary tank or container, where an operator or a fish farmer can get into and pull out fish with the net the way he wants. Therefore, in general, there are no restrictions on the diameter and depth of the tanks for trout, but it's important to take into account again the hydraulics issue. Try to stick to the ratio of diameter depth of 3 to 1 or 5 to 1, maximum 7 to 1, but no more. Otherwise, the hydraulics will be very poor, and if you want to make the tank very deep, it requires much more serious calculations and considering the hydraulics of water movement in the tanks. You might ask, what about canals? After all, the Danes farm trout in rectangular long canals. In general, there are many farms in Europe where trout is grown in long rectangular canals, which, for example, are one and a half meters in width and also one and a half meters in depth, and maybe up to 20-30 meters in length. Could I do the same? Yes, you can. You can grow trout in long rectangular concrete tanks. Make it a Danish-style farm. Do I recommend this option? On the whole, yes, I do, it's a good option, but I would not grow large trout in such kennels, because there is a number of nuances, for instance, in regards to the speed of water circulation. To make it short, in these kennels, the Danes usually grow trout up to a small weight of 300-500 grams. If you want to grow trout up to 3 kilograms, be prepared that there will be certain complications. African catfish Well, the African catfish certainly has its special aspects. In general, the catfish doesn't care what kind of tank to live and to grow in. What is the diameter depth shape of these tanks? You can choose any shape of tank, even rectangular, because African catfish lives at such high stocking densities that all the emitted suspended solids must be removed from the tanks and the system as a whole. The question of the tank's self-cleaning is settled by itself at African catfish farms. Of course, I mean grow-out fish tanks with high stocking density, for example, 300 kg per cubic meter. But there are nuances. First, African catfish is a cannibal. If you put a large quantity of African catfish into one tank, they start growing unevenly. If you don't sort them in time, they just start to eat each other. Therefore, in order for the catfish farm to operate efficiently, you need to sort the fish on a regular basis. Therefore, it's not advisable to install small number of large tanks. It's better to provide for many tanks of smaller size. African catfish has excellent growth parameters. By the way, I had a negative experience when we put catfish in the existing large 5-meter tanks, 20 cubic meters, connected them to RAS, and catfish grew very badly. It's still unclear why. That is, in large tanks, catfish is stressed, it doesn't eat well, it doesn't grow well. And it's not just my observation. Although specialized of African catfish recommended installing tanks no larger than 10 cubic meters in volume. So I recommended sticking to 10 cubic meters rule. This is the maximum tank's volume you should design for African catfish. Yes, if you have a large-scale farm, you will have to provide for a large number of tanks. Well, that's okay. But in those tanks of up to 10 cubic meters, you are guaranteed to grow African catfish safely and efficiently it will have low cannibalism rate and proper growth parameters. Australian crayfish Well, this hydrobiont has started to be farmed in RAS not so long ago. It has its own peculiarities in terms of RAS design. Generally, when growing Australian crayfish, you can forget about large round tanks. About growing one enormous tank. All that is utopia. I'll explain why. First of all, crayfish is a bottom hydrobiont. That is, it lives within a layer of water which is relatively small in area. 20 cm are enough for it to live and grow. And within 20 cm it needs certain shelters and on several levels. As crayfish is a hydrobiont that grows on the bottom of the tank, so it makes no sense to make tanks one meter or even half a meter deep. This is the first point. The second point is that crayfish is a well-known cannibal, and the more crayfish are stocked within the same area, the more they begin to grow unevenly. 
and during malting they start eating each other. That's why crayfish have their own peculiarities. The optimum tray depth is 25 cm, 20 cm of water column and 5 cm of dry reserve. Therefore, at almost all crayfish farms, the depth of the trays is 25 cm. As far as the trays dimensions are concerned, there are different approaches. From 2 meters long by half a meter wide to even 10 meters long and 1 meter wide. And I personally saw such trays. The most important thing is that it's convenient to perform all the operations with crayfish. And there is still a great deal of manual work involved while farming Australian crayfish. I consider a four-story rack to be optimum, where each tray is 25 cm deep, 35 m long and 7100 cm wide. And four-story rack is rather convenient to operate. Not too big, not too small. This is what I would recommend. And it seems to be quite natural to put polypropylene trays with an external metal frame. And now we proceed to the shrimp. What type of shrimp? It's a freshwater Rosenberg shrimp of anime shrimp. What's the approach to designing tanks for these shrimp species? I'll be honest, the approaches could be different and may vary from one rest designer to another. Generally, I would probably recommend making tanks half a meter deep, so that the water is 40 cm deep, 5 meters long and 1 meter wide. Such trays can be installed in two, sometimes even three levels. This way, the shrimp will feel comfortable, grow well and there will be less problems, especially with cannibalism issue and so on. That said, but there are other approaches. When the shrimp is grown in one huge tank, which is, for example, 1.20 meters deep, let's presume that it's 5 meters wide and 20 meters long. I've seen that too, and it's not an exceptional case, especially if the shrimp is grown on by a flock and the tank is being constantly aerated. Sure, there are also other fish species such as carp, white amu, whitefish, tilapia, and so on. But they are less widely farmed in recirculating aquaculture systems, so I will not dwell on them. I will only say one thing. In general, all of these basic species will grow perfectly in the tanks of 2 to 5 meters in diameter, 1 to 2 meters in depth. If you don't know exactly which type of tank to select, then take this suggested range and nothing will go wrong. But I'm talking about tank's dimensions for grow out fish only. As for the fry, it's formed more or less in accordance with the same principle irrespective of fish species. And the last, let's talk about colors. Because most of us tend to forget about this seemingly insignificant nuance. What colors are most appropriate? Is red or black OK? Not really. Why not? Because there are the results of the surveys. Experience. It has been observed that fish grows and fills well inside the tanks with the shades of green, blue and gray. Sometimes the fish feels comfortable in white tanks. Other colors are not recommended. That's red, black, yellow, all these colors can have a negative impact on the fish growth parameters, can cause fish stress, growth rate will be low, digestion will be bad. All in all, I'll be honest, we didn't even experiment, because we don't see any point in that. What for? To get a negative result? And even if you get a positive result, then what for? When you can install such wonderful looking blue or green tanks which you can see behind me and your fish is guaranteed to grow well. So it's recommended to stick to the most commonly used and tested color solution. And if anyone knows why other colors should not be applied, or has some other in-depth knowledge in the subject, be sure to write it in the comments. I would be happy to add that my knowledge of the tank's color issue. Friends, today we discussed recommendable shapes and sizes of tanks for each major fish species farmed in RAS. But still there are more important issues to be covered, such as water supply, drainage and fish catching. So be sure to watch part 3 as well, and you will get even more information on how to select the right type of fish holding tanks. This is Anton Pelcher. Press the like button, subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it.